and I live in Central Virginia and I'm a yoga teacher and a Dharma teacher and a friend of Wayland's. Today on Zen Home and Garden with Lynchburg <laughs> Public Access TV, Dr. Cindy Lee, <laughs> chaplain. Okay, that's not really, we already did all that. So, I'm here with my dear friend, Auntie Cindy, the first yoga program I ever created, as I say in every video in my career, well before Elephant, when I worked for Shambhala Mountain Center, was with Richard Freeman and yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just up the mountain. Just another here. program for her, just a little thing. She doesn't remember. Me, I do. You were just a young, I you was. know, little tidbit. Yeah, still pretty young. Thank you for not disagreeing <laughs> with me on camera. So here's the serious question. I've been working on this for right. weeks to try and impress you with a serious question. Good. So I go to a popular yoga studio that yeah. is part of a franchise of yoga studios. Yeah. Very nice people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Everything's pretty. There's showers, which I love. Yeah, you Shampoo need that. and conditioner in the showers. You can rent really? a towel. Wow. It's very civilized. Cool. You can scan your card. Yeah. Everything's together. Nice. When I go in, though, and I'm coming from sort of like a hippie yoga studio where everything was hardcore and disorganized, there's never any alignment or adjustments, generally, unless it's to like the iPod music playlist and the teacher's like messing with the music <laughs> playlist. That's where the adjustments in yoga happen <laughs> okay. in 2015. So my question is, you've been doing yoga forever. Yeah. Yeah, for so long. Yeah. I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you see this sort of big box yoga phenomenon happening? And what do you think about it? Well, of course, I see the big box yoga phenomenon happening. And um, I also see the hippie disorganized thing is still hanging on. And then there's... It's old, it's creeping along. Yeah, it's yeah. creeping along, but it's good. And, and then there's uh, middle path, mm. you know, Namaste. always. Yeah, there's always the middle path situation. So, you know, I have to say the same thing I always say, which is that it's all good. Uh, well, if we've heard it, you could just... Yeah, same old thing. And, and it's all a gate, it's a gateway. Okay. Everything's a gateway, so it's all okay. Um, but I think that we are seeing the... the um, the result of a lot of the big box yoga, because a lot of people go there, it is easy, it's very accessible, and there are partnerships with other yoga um, companies. And so, um, it, you know, it, it starts to uh, maybe get things uh, standardized mm -hmm. in a way that might be limited. Right. And so I think that something else is happening though, which is good, that then then I don't think backlash is the right word but it's creating a niche like when yoga studios in New York first started popping up they actually came because there was a lot of yoga in gyms and people started getting really into it and then there was a need for those people to go to a yoga studio where a they could deeper yoga experience. deeper yoga experience so I think that that is starting to come already so it's good people are coming in they're getting channeled in but then they're going Where's uh, some older teachers that have a little bit more, uh, d you know, information, a little bit more depth, experience, who can actually have a voice and who see me, right. see me as a student. There's a real teacher-student mm. um, option that isn't so available in those kind of other scenarios or with teachers that don't have as much experience. So you're and saying so the very fact that there's a 500-page boring manual of this is how you teach yoga at our yoga big box yoga studio is creating a desire for many yoga students who have done the big box yoga to find wisdom teachers. I think teachers. so. I think so, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people have that experience. They start here and they go, well, that's really cool and I'm good with this. And other people start there and they say, this has piqued my curiosity. I yeah. want to know a little bit more about this stuff. And yeah. somebody like me, I teach teacher training. I don't have a manual because that's deadening for me. And I find that deadening. I want people to take notes and get it in their Have to think for body. Yeah. And um, I don't, you know, t want to teach exactly the same thing every time. Right. You know, so it's always alive and fresh and growing. And I'm, frankly, alive and fresh and growing. Oh, yes. You know, yeah. and so I bring it that way. And, um, and I continue to study myself. And so that's, there's a certain kind of richness that I think, um, you know, is part of the big picture. It's all part of the big story. So this is like a somewhat typical 
argument that I feel like we have in yeah. Boulder. In Boulder, Colorado, we sit around in our tiki or Lululemon yoga pants at microbreweries and we argue about yoga ethics. That's what we do for fun yeah. with our rescue dog yeah. and our you know, off-road vehicle yeah. or our bike yeah. collection. Um, and the argument, what I always say, because I kind of agree, but I also kind of disagree, which is I feel like it might be a gateway, but it's a narrow gateway. There's only so many people studying with the Cindy Lees or the Richard Freemans or the people who care about yoga's intention or alignment yeah. or, and more than just aerobics. Right. Um, and most people are doing upper dog like this or doing crazy, you know, yeah. doing hap, not, yeah. they're not getting taught alignment. They're not really necessarily being taught intention beyond you might look really good in your, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I don't mean, it's, it's, it's not it's black okay. and white. But. It's okay. And it's interesting because uh, that picture you painted of Boulder, because I live, as you know, in Lynchburg, Virginia, where uh, you can't buy you can't buy Lululemon unless Lululemon from Charlottesville comes down and does a trunk show once a year. Uh -huh. uh, we we don't we, we do have a microbrewery, but anyway, it's a whole. How can you possibly practice yoga without Lululemon? It's hard. Pants? I know. Well, because I like Autumn Tennille, uh -huh. so nice. there. Yeah, and I like, I like Alison ways, Bells. Organic. You know, and um, and hippie clothes. So there it is. Yeah. I'm trying to be sporty, and you know, because I'm in the mountain right now. But is a vest mean sporty? Yeah. Cool. Lesbian too. Totally. Huh? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Well. Um, so what was <laughs> what was Someone's I blushing and got distracted. <laughs> so how's your love life lately? So, no, I Any news? No, that's not what Any I Any news for Elephant Nation? <laughs> Still no. dating that handsome professor? Oh, Has he been replaced? I was going to say we're getting married, but that's a secret. Are you serious? So, yeah. Oh, he's so handsome. Isn't he we nice? have to edit that part Yay. out. Congratulations. Yay. Yay. No. Well, I, I approve. Know. We're getting married right before Thanksgiving. So if it's if a this huge out, wedding, you should consider inviting me. Well, if it's a modest sized wedding, I don't expect it. It's an me and Brad Meredith and, and I will City come Hall. And video you. It's City Hall. Oh, we can do well, New York we probably City won't Hall. make the City yeah. Hall. Hut. So anyway, but so what was I saying? It was so interesting before that. Um, um, that you were saying those bolder conversations. We don't sit around like that in Lynchburg because right. the yoga community is way, way, way smaller. Right. But. What I do know is that I started this little yoga studio there, Yoga Goodness. Is that what it's called? It's called Yoga Goodness. Uh, yeah. I want to eat it. Opening to basic goodness. Yum. Yeah. It's yummy. And um, that I, I, nip it in I the was butt. told, you know, don't put up ohms, don't put up Buddhas, that's going to freak people out. You know, right. there's a very conservative culture. And I was like, mm, I really appreciate that feedback. Thank you. I well, want everybody to feel welcome. And then right. I went home and I thought, no. <laughs> <laughs> Because I got to do my thing. I got, right. And, you know, really to honor my teachers and my practice, I have to present it um, in the fullness that I can. Hashtag swagger. Yeah, okay. Hashtag swagger. I don't get it. But anyway, so that's what I do. And that's... Um, you got to do your thing. That has magnetized like, you know, a lot of people. It's like Lunta. I'm sort of being vaguely it serious. It is like, like you got to kind of own your thing. Yeah, so I owned it. And... Yeah. Um, and people were, you know, have, are coming out of the woodwork to find this because it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty rich offering. And so it might be a small gateway, but it's good because it's not a Dharma bubble. Boulder's a Dharma bubble, New York, LA. It's this not is, a Buddhism bubble of... No, yeah. so people are like, oh, cool, you know, that's great. This is, you're, you're, you've got the alignment and you've got the wisdom aspect and, um, so I think that there's an audience for that, mm. you know, and I don't know if it's narrow or it's fat, but it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Louise Hay said, every teacher thinks they're a fraud, but you just do what you can and the people that need what you have will find you. So there yeah. it is. You don't like that? Oh, I, I, I agree and I sympathize, but I also, I do feel like for 99% of people doing yoga, they don't necessarily but it's always like have that. have access to a yoga goodness kind of teacher. Yeah, but they, you know what? It's always like that. Mm -hmm. That's what it's like with all everything in Dharma, mm -hmm. right? So you have to seek it out. Or that not. you have to seek it out, and you find the teacher. And if you're yeah. drawn to it, you'll you'll read. You'll Roshi Joan calls it being a book Buddhist, yeah. and you find your teachers, and then you stick with it or you don't stick with it. And that's it's always been like that. Yeah. You know, I mean. So yeah. that's that's uh, maybe good. Okay. Okay. 
He's not buying it. All right. Well. No, I just, I guess, you know, we're both Buddhists here, and I don't mean to get too in-depth or long. I promised you a short conversation. But um, I do feel like meditation is not a part of yoga classes. Yeah. I do feel like, you know, Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, you know, the calming yeah. of the waves of the mind or yeah. the intention. Yeah. There is a lot of beautiful intention. I'll give yeah, public yoga classes a, that. Yeah. But, um, well, I think, I, I do think, um, in a way, I have, I don't know if advantage is the right word, but, but being a Buddhist, you know, serious Buddhist student and practitioner for lo these many decades. I'm not very serious, very humorous, serious Buddhist teacher. She has a wonderful sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I mean, I care about the Dharma and yeah. I'm connected to it and, you know, every day. And, you know, the Buddhists are the black belts of meditation. You know, we know how to meditate. Mm. And I think that most yoga people just don't know how to meditate. Right. They just don't really learn how to do it. They don't. And Buddhists don't know how to get off their asses sometimes. Yeah. I'm speaking about my community personally. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Yes, I've had some issues with that. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm not saying anything more. Okay. About that. That's over. <laughs> We're moving on. Yeah. I'm not, not going to talk about your ass. Oh, I see. On camera. Okay. There's not much to talk about. <laughs> it's pretty small. We can talk about my ass. That would go on for a lot longer. Yeah. But we don't have time on Lynchburg Public Access. So thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you, Wei. Big fan. You're a big sweetheart. No. And uh, congratulations to you. Shh. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, thank you for Secret. everything. Okay. High five. See ya. Let me respectfully remind you, life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes quickly and opportunity is lost. Let us awaken, awaken, take heed. Do not squander your life.